I'll tell you guys about my experience going to Vietnam. Uh, I was stationed in Germany. Uh, this was in 67. I had gotten a leave to go home in the month of November. And I think I left in uh, October or something and uh, flew home to Sacramento, came back to Germany after a 30 day leave and walked into the, the I was stationed outside of Mannheim uh, and walked into the company headquarters and uh, I was in 2nd uh, Squadron, 2nd Cavalry, uh, working under the 7th uh, uh, Army. And uh, airborne, of course. And I uh, walked into the headquarters and they handed me a set of orders. Said, go back. Go back to the States immediately. Report in at Fort Campbell. You got one week to get there. Um, you're now part of the 101st Airborne Division. What? That took me by surprise. And it says, you're going to Vietnam. Put your material and business in order. Get out of here. I had to pack my bags. I left the next day. Went, went right back to Frankfurt. Jumped on an airplane in Frankfurt. Right back to the United States. So I reported in Fort Campbell. Fort, uh, yeah, Fort Campbell, Kentucky. Uh, when I got there at, at the barracks, there's nobody there. There was the, that dirty old bastard master sergeant that was there. And, uh, and our, uh, barracks, I was the first one in the building. Barracks was nothing but empty bunks and rolled up mattresses and had a lieutenant, uh, there, uh, Lieutenant, uh, Beaton. And uh, he tells me, he says, okay, you're part of 2nd uh, Platoon, you're going to do this, you're going to do that. You're the sergeant in charge until I get a sergeant. And it was just me and this lieutenant. I slept in this big old empty barracks all by myself that night. And so by the next day, a couple more guys arrived, two or three other guys arrived, and they became the unit. And that was 2nd uh, Platoon. Well, I think I told you in an earlier video that I'm, the, I'm an 11 Delta. I was trained in tanks. And how I wound up in Airborne is a whole other story I might tell one of these days, but it uh, has nothing to do with Vietnam. And I wind up in, uh, in charge of a squad. And then uh, I, and I, became, I was the platoon sergeant for a little while until we got a platoon sergeant. But uh, he made me, lieutenant made me a E5 right on the spot. They cut the orders for that. And uh, so, we trained, this was in uh, uh, early, uh, let's see, December, it was November, I believe. So we only spent a few few weeks there training and then uh, re-equipping, got our Jeeps, got all our equipment and so forth. And then the next thing you know, we're on our way to Vietnam. We loaded up on old uh, C-141 Starlifters and these uh, amazing aircraft. Uh, just big old round tubes that fly. And uh, we load all our vehicles in there with the front of them facing the rear of the aircraft so we can deplane quickly. And uh, lashed everything down, loaded our gear in the Jeeps, and whoop, off we go to Vietnam. Landed in Alaska wearing Vietnamese, you know, we're wearing v Vietnam like clothing. And in Alaska, it was snowing up to here, and it was awful. Uh, but we only had to stay out of the aircraft for an hour long enough for him to refuel and then we went on to Vietnam. Well, we landed in Vietnam at uh, uh, Benoit in the middle of the night, about midnight in fact. And uh, they were under fire. They had just received a bunch of rockets on the airfield. And so our C-141 wouldn't stop. It kept rolling while we had to unchain our vehicles. They dropped the back ramp and away we went and drove out of this moving aircraft. And uh, uh, off we go into the darkness in Vietnam. Well, the inside of this C-141 is air conditioned. And it was really nice, comfortable, uh, slept most of the way there. They opened that back ramp and this uh, god awful, unusual smell. I think people who live in the, near the swamps in Louisiana have that same familiarity with that smell, with that particular odor. 
and down in down into the uh, darkness we go, running like that. I held the first jeep out of the back door, almost turned over, because the driver was pretty excited, and he slammed out of there, and uh, we all followed. Well, this stinky jungle, uh, rotten vegetation smells strikes us, and part of it was also a, a waft of aroma from Saigon, which might be on record as one of the filthiest cities that ever existed. And uh, uh, when we race out in the middle of the night, uh, we got a ground guide, a, a jeep that says, you know, one of those follow me jeeps gets us up the airbase. Well, they held us up on a certain part of the airbase for reorganization, planning, and so forth. We're just keeping us out of the way. About sunup, uh, they start moving us off the base. And as we're rolling uh, forward uh, in convoy, a jeep and trailer, four GIs on each jeep, <coughs> driver, TC, and two other guys. And uh, my particular duty at that time, just because it needed space to need to be carried, was standing behind the machine gun. Well, they wouldn't let us have bullets. We had bullets on board, but they wouldn't let us load our machine guns. So we just, I'm hanging on this stupid empty machine gun, M60. It's on a pedestal behind the, between the two seats of the Jeep. And we go up this little hill and here's a guard post right outside the base. And I was, I don't know, it just, it, it really kind of sank into me pretty deep because here was sandbag bunker that was two stories high, tons and tons of sandbags that it's made out of, and there's a sun-shaded, raggedy-ass uh, uh, position on top of this two-story bunker that is, uh, uh, it's just got GIs sitting up there with no shirt, machine guns all over the place, machine gun belts laying over the sandbags, and it was like, so primitive, it was so warlike. And I stared at that quite a bit as we drove by and it, it really, really took me by surprise. This is, this is war, I told myself. This is, oh my God, what have I gotten into? And of course, I didn't want to go to Vietnam. I tried to get out of it, but there was no getting out of it for a good airborne trooper. I mean, if I could jump out of airplanes, I could damn sure fight. And that's how the army looked at it. And uh, anyway, we wind up going up this hill and, and uh, Benoit Air Base uh, set up on, on this hill overlooking one of the runways. And we were some distance away, you know, a couple of miles, but uh, you could look out the back of our tent and see the planes taking off. But uh, uh, we lived in these kind of half high, dug down into the ground a little bit with sandbags on the sides little uh, screened in back porches basically is what they were that held about 40 men in each one and uh, that's how we got established there in Benoit set up our base camp dug a big old hole put a connex container in it and that was our bomb shelter had showers duck boards to walk around if it rained we wouldn't be in the mud mess hall the whole bit and that's how I got into Vietnam. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Hey, hit the like button.